three. Welcome everyone. I would like to introduce you to John Light Jr. AKA Mr. John. Hi, Mr. John. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> so our first question for you is we just would like to know a little bit about you. Where did you get your library degree? Um, where do you work and what do you do at your library or institution? Okay. So I just got my library degree, just received it from Syracuse University. Uh, I was supposed to walk this year. I'm one of those 2020 graduates that's been cast to the side. <laughs> but, um, uh, but actually the black librarians, they're gonna do the, um, the commencement service for us. So that's good too. Uh, so just got it from Syracuse University. Um, and I work at Potomac Community Library in Woodbridge, Virginia. I work in the Youth Services Department. And so, you know, we, we uh, pro do programming for babies, you know, six months up to teens. And so I do that. I also work on the information desk as well, do outreach to schools, host tours and things um, at the library as well. So now that's pretty much what I do. All right, all right. So was it because you already had worked in a library where you decided to pursue your degree? Yes, well, let's say, what's that? That's a long, that's a long answer. Um, <laughs> so I was in, in and around libraries since I was in my undergrad, uh, which is at Old Dominion University. That was my work study. My work study was at the library in the serials department. So I was in that for about two years. Um, and then I, when I got out of school, uh, out of Old Dominion, I was looking for work and I thought about the library again. So I ended up working at Virginia Beach Public Library, um, the Central Library, and I was there for a long time. And, um, but when I left there to move to, uh, we moved to Savannah, Georgia, I wasn't in the library for a while. And it took me a while to get back around to it. But once I got back into a library, it was like, oh, like I forgot about the library. And like this, this kind of like aura fell upon me. It was like, what are, what are you doing? You're supposed to be in the library. And so I was like, okay, I got to get back in there. So once I got back uh, into the library uh, here at Potomac, uh, then I was like, okay, like I got to get, like I got to get a degree and like, uh, and really make this a career. Cause at this point, like this is what I want to do. And so once I really decided that, decided that that's, this was what I wanted to do, um, that's when I went to go get my degree. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So I was doing a little research and I looked up your website. Um, they lived happily ever after .com, mm -hmm. And it shows there you are an author as mm -hmm. well as a librarian. Would you like to share your journey into becoming an author as well? Yes. Yes. I always, I've always had a, a passion for writing. Um, but I was kind of, I was the type of person that I always would, would start to, I would start a writing project, but I wouldn't ever finish it. And so I was like, oh, there's this book I need to write. Now I try to write a book. Oh, I can't, I can't write a book. It's too long. Oh, there's a short story I want to write. I, I'm going to try to write this short story. I'm like, oh, like I started, but I wouldn't finish it. And like, um, and so I guess about three, about three or four years ago, I thought about writing a children's book. And I actually sat down and I actually finished it. So I was I was just happy that I finished it. I was like, yes, like I finished something. And um, and so that ended up being my book. And so this is my book here, The Adventures of Joshua and Pip. Um, so yeah, I finished writing it about three years ago, but it I did not, it didn't uh, get published, or I didn't publish it until uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and so it it's a good it was it was a good journey um it's a lot a lot goes into publishing uh you don't really know but i was blessed to like just kind of meet the right people i think when you when you try to when you want to do something uh then those things start to fall into place and so i really wanted to to get this book published and so you know i found the right people uh i i, I found my illustrator on on instagram it was a it was a it was a guy that I was following. I was like, man, I really like his illustrations. He would post them every day. He would post something every day. Every day he would post like a little. I said, man, I really like it. And I was like, I wonder if he'll do the book. <laughs> and and so like I graduated. So this is this is very recent. I graduated, 
uh, and then, you know, I finished in December, last December, I said, okay, I'm going to ask him. I'm just going to, I'm just going to send him a message and ask him. I sent him a message. Um, he was like, okay, well, let me look at it. And so I sent him the manuscript. He was like, oh man, I love it. Like, yeah, I'll, like I'll do it. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> like, are you serious? Like, really? He was like, yeah, I'll do it. And so we, and so that, I think that was in January. We started in January and I just released it May the 15th. Um, it, and, and he, and he, he helped me a lot during the process because he's already published some books. So it, it, I mean, it goes to show if you if you make like uh, really good connections and relationships with people, like there's people that know so much and they're like just willing to share it. Like he could have he could have like charged me for the information he was giving me, and he was just giving it to me, uh, you know, because he wanted to see the project succeed. So, um, you know, I would say just start. Like if it's something you want to do, start it, finish it. Cause that was my problem. Finish it and then just keep taking the steps, step by step, step by step, until you can get to um to finish what it is that you want to do. Well, amazing. Um, people don't realize how much of a it's not just a social tool, but it is a networking tool. I know you and I met on Instagram as yep. well. So this has been a great journey, especially for us um black indigenous and people of color librarians getting together yep. on various social media platforms and mm -hmm. making a connection and beginning to network together. Yep. This has been an amazing journey. So my next question is a little bit about equity, diversity, and inclusion mm -hmm. and your perspective on why do you think it's important to have more representation of black indigenous librarians of color or library mm -hmm. staff of color yes. um, in libraries? I was thinking about that question this morning and it was funny when I was at Virginia Beach when I first started in Virginia Beach we had like a all staff like the whole system system wide staff meeting and we were sitting in the in the in the conference room and there's the they have a screen up there and they have the the um like the breakdown of the of the county like you know you know, black, black, white, male, female, and they had all like to, to tell you like who's working in the, you know, in the system. And I'm sitting there looking at the screen. And so I go down to like black and then I go over to like, uh, let's say, let's say it was like 20 to 25 or something like that. So I go over to 20 and 25 black and it's like one. Oh, and male, male, one. I was like, hmm, that's me. <laughs> like, that's me right there. There I go. <laughs> so um, it, it's, it's very important because I feel like if I, if there were more, uh, P, you know, if there were more of me in the system, I think I would have saw librarianship as an option a lot sooner than I did. Um, so I was in my 20s or so when I when I started really started into the into, into librarianship in Virginia Beach, um, and now I'm 42. I've been at I've been at uh, Potomac for about five years. So I was like late 30s before I got in before I got back to the libraries and said, you know what, this can be a career for you. Um, and so I feel like if there were more people, more representation, um, that I would have been I would have there could have been someone there to say, hey, like. Like this can be, this can be your future. Like you can do this and make a living and help people and, you know, and serve people. And like this, this can be, you can do this. All you got to do is follow these steps. Um, and really I didn't have that. Uh, I, like I tried to go to different departments. I tried to apply to get to different departments. I didn't get, you know, I didn't get pulled for the, for the interview or whatever. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's not, you know, I guess it's not meant to be, but um, I think if it was more people there, I really would have been like, okay, like I can really do this as opposed to being like the only black man in the system, <laughs> which is what I was the first time, like the only black man in the system, like unless you was like in uh, what you call it, like grounds, you know, grounds, you know, somebody that's doing, you know, they like doing real, real work with their hands, you know, so it was, it was, it would have, it would have helped I think for sure. Yes, there's definitely some work to do in our profession, um, wholeheartedly, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
So um, if you could provide upcoming library staff or future librarians um, any advice, what would it be? I would say, I would say one that this is, I would tell them that this is an option for you. Just like I was just saying a second ago, like this is a viable option for you. Um, you can make a living doing this. Now you, you do have to be um, educated. There are some things that you have to get done. If you wanted to make it a true career, you do have to get your degree. Um, and I would really stress about getting actually going and getting that degree. Not necessarily, like when you look at the positions, everything always says you have to have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what I really took from going to school is it really gave me a, a, a basis and a foundation for what it is that I'm actually doing. Like I'm, I'm not just at the information desk helping somebody print a paper, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's a lot of times that's what you're doing. For me, I work in a public library. You know, a lot of times you're helping somebody on the computer. You're helping someone print a paper. But what we don't know is, like, this paper could change their life. We don't know what this paper is. Like, this this paper that they're doing, this ticket that, they, like, you're empowering people to, to change their lives to be the best that they can be. And when I first, when I first started the program, that was one of the things we had to do. You had to write out like your, your kind of like your mission statement uh, uh, for being in a program, for being a librarian. And, and what I ended up settling on for me was like, I want to empower people to be the best that they can be. And so now when you have that as your basis, you can go about your work and you can, you, you know why you're doing what you're doing. It comes across in how you deal with people, um, how you interact with people. Um, they can tell like, oh, like this person really cares, you know, that. that like, I will say one really go and get that, that degree and get that basis and that foundation and, you know, and to just, and to know that this is an option for you. And, um, and it's wonderful people. There's so many people. Um, that I met in, in school, that I met through Instagram. But right now, Instagram is kind of like my, my uh, conference. <laughs> if you, I'm not a part of all of the conferences yet, <laughs> associations yet. I'm a part of VLA. Um, so I'm going to try to get on some of the other uh, associations. But there's just so many people that are willing to help you. And, and if you're somebody who likes to help people, um, likes to serve people, and but you but you want to do it and I guess and you want it to be something like you can take home like like it has some dignity to it like librarianship is a wonderful thing to do because that's all you do is you help and serve um, no no matter where you are in in what is whether it's school or public or academic you're helping people reach their potential and like for me I want to be able to say that what I'm doing means something. Um, when I was, so before I got back to the library, I was at um, an insurance company and I was doing fine at the insurance company. I, I could have stayed at the insurance company for 20 years and retired and, and whatever. But there was something that was like, man, like I'm not fulfilled. Like I need some fulfillment. And so if you're a person who needs fulfillment, you, you, gotta, you gotta know, you gotta learn about yourself. You gotta learn yourself, follow your passions and your dreams. And I'll tell you, I've, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, it. I was like, man, like, I don't want to do this. Like I could, but I don't want to do this forever. And then I walked in that library and it was like, boom, like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like you finally came back. And it was like, as soon as I walked in that library, it was like, oh, I got to get back. I got to get back to the library. And from that point, it was probably maybe four months from that point to me getting back into the library. Cause it, Cause that focus, it was like, oh, that focus, like, oh, I, I need to get back here. I know what I want to do, and I just did. I just step by step. I had to get back there. And ever since I've been back, I've been so happy. And um, you know, follow your passions. Learn about yourself. Learn who you are. Um, uh, first and foremost, cause that's gonna help you in your library career as well to help you figure out where you want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So to quote you, you said empower people 
to the, be the best they can be. Oh my God, that is absolutely wonderful. You definitely, definitely are a librarian. That is what we are. We are a service industry and we aim to, to serve, to please. We, we help our students, we help our patrons, no matter what. We bend over backwards to ensure they get what they need. And that's all what it is. You know, it's not about self. It's about, at the end of the day, making sure our library patrons get what they need. And I love it. Like librarianship is, is definitely a passion for a lot of us. I mm -hmm. can see it in you. I know it's in me. Um, it's not about the money. It's not about the notoriety. Mm -hmm. It's all about how we can help someone at the end of the day. You know, we're not in it yeah. to be um, seen. You know, yeah. you know, oftentimes this can be a, not a necessarily a thankless job, but, you know, oftentimes people don't realize how much we do to get things done. Mm -hmm. And so it's wonderful being on this journey. So last, 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 well, not necessarily a question, but last statement. Um, so we talked a little bit about your book and your website. Can you, um, for students who may want to follow you, for students who may want to purchase your book, can you provide them with details on how to do that? And what maybe if any social media accounts that you want students to follow you on, or maybe you just want them to um, follow you on your website, you know, just share that information, please. Okay. Yeah, well, on Instagram, uh, I am Mr. John, J-O-H-N underscore T-L-H-E-A. They lived happily ever after. That's the name of my business. They live happily ever after. So Mr. John underscore T-L-H-E-A. Um, and then my website is www.theylivedhappily.com. And so if you can uh, connect with me, any of those places, uh, also on Facebook, I have They Lived Happily Ever After um, on a Facebook page as well. And, um, and yeah, I, I'll be glad to, to help in any way that I can. And uh, I just appreciate you allowing me to talk about, uh, you know, librarianship and talk about my book, uh, Talk Period. Because <laughs> I haven't been around my babies. We, we just started, we just started doing a baby story time, uh, a live stream a couple of weeks ago. And so I finally got to see my babies again. And it's just, it's just, it's just wonderful. So I, I missed them. <laughs> Aww. Yes, indeed. So yeah, thank you for having me on and uh, allowing me to, to talk. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this definitely, I'm going to be reaching out to more and more librarians. Um, I just want, or especially the students in my class, you know, I want them to see, you know, you do have to have a passion for doing this. If this is a job you want to do just because you're kind of maybe hide from reality or you just want to sit back and maybe read books. It's not a giant book club. You know, we actually do work, but I want them to see the love, the passion, the sweat, the tears that goes into doing what we do. You know, we don't yeah. take anything that we do lightly. Every decision we make, um, every program we implement, and like you said, you know, you miss your babies, and that's what happens. You form these relationships with your library patrons, and they become a part of your family. And yeah, so, I mean, that, yes, so it's, it's important to understand you know, just how passionate you have to be. Just, you know, so it, it's an amazing field. Um, I don't think it gets the highlights that it should. You know, every time there's, you know, when you hear about the government and their budget cuts or whatever they're cutting, you know, education and libraries are always, you know, top on the chopping block. Great. And if you really understood how vital libraries are to society, mm -hmm. we would never be on the chopping block at all. We wouldn't even be on the list at all. And, and really, it's like it's, it, that is crazy that 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 happens when really here in America, when they started, you know, when they wanted to start a place like a library is like usually one of the first things that they created. And you look at how in other uh, in other places in the world where they don't have libraries as prevalent, um, like, like a lot of when you when you look at our our, um, our, our migrant population that come over. And like a lot of times we have to like teach them like, hey, like, no, like these books are free. Like, you know, yeah, you got to give us some information so you can get a library card, but these books are free. Take as many as you want. When you finish, bring them back. And a lot of places aren't used to that type of situation, like with, where things are free uh, like that. Like the, like the library is just such an institution for the community like it's really is it really a, a community if you don't have a library i don't i don't really think so um but another thing you was when you were talking about earlier about the passion 
now because I know these are students. Um, you know, now you might get in when you know. Hopefully, you go into the into the um, into librarianship and you come out. I mean, there's there's still a lot of people. Um, I feel like there's an old guard still in the libraries where it's about protecting the building and protecting the stuff. And what do you, what do you want? What you know? And so we do need a lot more like young energy, uh, new people to come in because I feel like when I went to school, it was all about knowing your community. You know, how can you serve the community? Like it was so many classes and so many points and principles about getting to know the people that you're serving. And a lot of times you go back when I was in school, I would go back to work and I'd be like, okay, why are y'all giving these people such a hard time? <laughs> like, they, th this is our community. This is what they want. So let's give them what they want. Oh, right. you know, and so it's still kind of old guard in there. And that's why you need, you know, fresh, fresh energy. You need people to come in there to, you know, kind of in, inject that. Um, because it's, it's really something that you're serving people. If you like to serve, uh, if you like to help people, then being a librarian is one of the best things that you can be. Oh, gosh, I agree with you. I know this, um, you know, that the whole fines and fee battle has been a big thing in, in the news lately. And I agree with you. If, if we're here to serve, then why are we so hung up on charging a dollar or, or, you know, oh, oh, no, you can't do anything because you owe a fine or you owe mm -hmm. a fee or whatever the case, you know, we're impeding access to information, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I agree with you. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I think, yeah, to use your terminal terminology, you get this old guard mentality. And so you mm -hmm. get stuck in librarianship being one way instead of librarianship being multifaceted, multidimensional the way mm -hmm. it is. You know, yep. we, we don't necessarily shake when something happens, we learn to shift. And so yep. oftentimes what happens as innovations come and, and trends change and things evolve, sometimes, you know, people get stuck in that one way and they aren't able to shift. And I do think ultimately that will be the demise of any library because we're just not shifting mm -hmm. with society. We're not shifting with our population. We're just stuck. This is yep. the rule. This is how it's been done forever. We're going to do it that way. And that's it. That's all. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah. But we're not going to, there's no, there's not going to be any demise because we know better. <laughs> yes. We know better. Yes. I wouldn't know. say everyone knows better, but we know better. <laughs> So I thank you so much, John, for giving me your time today to speak to my students, to be interviewed by me. I appreciate all your work. I am definitely going to um, list your uh, Instagram account, your Facebook account, and your website below in the links for the students when they see these videos. Mm -hmm. And so all the information will be there for you. I hope to see more books to come. I am okay. going to purchase this book. I need this book for my godson. He would love yes. it. Um, he's very much. almost two, but he loves books, you know, so we started him early. Um, so yes, I definitely thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. It was my pleasure. I hope y'all, I hope I'm talking to, I'm, I'm talking to so many librarians. Y'all gonna come out and change the world. Yes, thank you so much.